How does language affect our lives? Language is an essential component of culture. It is one of the ways in which we pass on what it means to be a part of a group or society. We know that animals also communicate, but there are elements of human communication which are unique. We know that languages are found in all cultures of the world and that the meanings that are given to a word are completely arbitrary. They can mean one thing in one language and may not mean anything in another language. It's just that we, what we as members of a culture assign to a word and its meaning. The unfortunate thing is that languages are disappearing. While there are approximately 7,000 discrete languages in the world, some of them are spoken only by a small number of people. 95% of the world's people speak fewer than 100 of those 7,000. In addition, languages are dying out. Human language is symbolic. We know that it that refers to the fact that language is based on symbols and that there's an arbitrary association of sounds with meaning. They only mean something because a culture in a shared aspect agrees on those things. We know that also another property or characteristic of human communication systems is its productivity, that words can be combined and recombined to make new words, and that happens all the time. Because of this, we can send an infinite number of messages through language. And one of the other things that distinguishes us from animals and animal communication is the idea of displacement. That is that we can talk about things in the past or even things in the future. If you wanna to talk to a friend and tell them what you did last week, you can do so because of the displacement quality of language. You can also talk about what you're going to do next week or next month or even years from now because of that. We could talk about things such as dinosaurs that are no longer even present on Earth, or we can talk about things that may or may not exist, such as ghosts and aliens. But the displacement quality of language allows us to do those things and distinguishes it from other systems of communication. Another thing which distinguishes non-human communication systems and human communication systems is the fact that non-human systems are what we refer to as closed systems. That is, they lack the productivity that we mentioned previously of being able to take sounds and recombine them to create new words and new meanings. When we start to examine the structure of human languages, there are things that we look at and rules that consider how we take those sounds and combine them to convey meaning or what are called phonemes. And each language has a grammatical structure that governs how those, the morphemes are formed into words and then how those words are arranged into phrases and sentences is what we call syntax. And we know that in various languages, the syntax may differ in some that you will have a verb that goes before the subject in other places, it will be the opposite. Morphemes are what make up words. And when we look at this particular word toasters and we see that toasters consist of three morphemes, toast, er, s, Toasters. Language families. Language family comprises all of the languages that derive from its common proto-language. English is a part of the Indo-European language family, and German is actually the mother of English. French and Spanish are sister languages, and if you've ever taken one, you will find that there are similarities between the two, it being a part of what we call oftentimes romance languages as well. And then the Russian, Bulgarian, and Polish 
share a common Slavic mother. A person who is not a native speaker of English will tell you this, that English is not an easy language to learn. For example, when you say the medic wound the bandage around the wound, the soldier decided to desert his desert in the desert. When Mr. Cheney fired his gun, the dove dove into the bushes. I did not object to the object. The invalid had an invalid driver's license. They were too close to the door to close the door. Those are things that people who speak English and have grown up speaking English may come naturally. But if you are a person who has not been raised in an environment where English is your first language, these kinds of distinctions and many more are just examples of how difficult English can be to learn. Oftentimes we discard that or are not aware of that when we talk about people learning English. It does present a lot of issues for many, many people. Historical linguistics looks at how languages change over time. Something that we may or may not realize is that language, in fact, does change. This slide, you can see, this is an introduction to Canterbury's Tales by Chaucer. And this is a reflection of Middle English, how people once spoke who were English speakers. And while some words may be familiar, the phrase is probably not completely familiar to you. So I'm going to translate it for you. When April, with its sweet smelling showers, has pierced the drought of March to the root and bathed every vein of the plants in such liquid by the power which the flower is created. Another field in linguistics is ethnolinguistics. And this is where we look at the relationship between language and culture. For example, among the Sami people who live in an area that snow is a constant part of their lives, they have over 200 words to describe snow. Here are just some examples of that. And then the other people that are pictured in this picture are the Maasai. The Maasai are an African culture. And for them, cattle are extremely important. In fact, a boy getting his first cow is a big event in his life. And the Maasai have over 200 to 400 words, depending upon the particular group that describe cattle. Again, demonstrating how language and culture can be intertwined and connected. And those things that are important to a culture tend to have more words to describe things within it. 